is what you get on OS the AM Coffee, your early morning television inspiration that is time for motivation, keeping your body fit through exercise, guest segments where we discuss trending issues in the polity with our analysts from different fields of life. All this will be showing on your TV Monday to Friday between 7 a.m. and 8.15 a.m. OS Busy TV AM Coffee. Start your day fresh. beautiful time since the beginning of this journey and I trust that by now you are a step closer to your greatness than when we began. Our focus today is treasures and their role in your greatness. Treasures are important because of their function and their value. They may be information, material possession and immaterial possession. Our relationships with treasures can further aid our journey to greatness or cut it short. This leads me to an all-important question I want you to think about before you answer. What do you treasure? This question is important because your greatness is largely determined by the answer to that question. I ask again, what do you treasure? How? How does your treasure determine your greatness, you may ask me. Allow me to explain. It's because... Your treasure, what you treasure, determines your values and influences your actions. Let me say that again. What you treasure tells me what your values are and influences your actions. And your values and your actions ultimately determine your greatness. Treasure also determines how you utilize your resources. I know what you treasure by what you spend time on by what you spend money on, and by what you, by the relationships you grow. The things you spend time and money on, they are like seeds that you water. They would eventually become a big fruit. So I know your treasure by what you spend your time on and by what you spend your money on and your resources. Treasure also produces fulfillment. And believe me, if there is no fulfillment in your journey, you most likely will not end up at greatness. So you see why the question, what do you treasure, is important. And why this week you need to answer the question, what do you treasure, before you move forward. Having said that much, it's important to note that there are treasures that produce greatness and there are treasures that hinder greatness. It means that there are things you treasure that will produce greatness in you, that will further aid your journey to greatness. And there are also things you treasure that will slow down your journey to greatness. Many people are not great today, not because they don't have potential, not because they don't have capacity, not because they don't have, but because they treasure the wrong things and their journey to greatness is terribly slowed down. Therefore, it's important to do personal introspection, to look inwards, so as to one, Determine your treasure. An understanding of what you treasure is an important factor on your journey to greatness. It will be terrible 
to treasure the things that hinder your greatness and not be aware of it. It's important to also examine your treasures. Have not found out what I treasure? Important to say, okay, what do I treasure? You write it down. Then have not found out what you treasure? It's important to ask yourself this question, this question. Does my treasure move me forward on my journey to greatness? It's also important to ask this question. What do great people treasure? What do great people treasure? That's question. What impact does my treasure have on my life, my purpose, and my journey to greatness? When you answer these questions sincerely and honestly, it will reveal to you the areas of life where you need to consciously reorder your treasure. You see, most times when we examine our treasures, we discover a need to reorder them. This means we discover a need to discard some of our present treasures and adapt new ones. I want to acknowledge that this is a tough process that forces you to deal with emotional and psychological issues. However, to refuse to examine your treasures is to make, is to make permanent in your life a situation that is meant to be temporary. Are you willing to risk your greatness for temporary comfort? If your answer is no, may I suggest that you approach the issue with a lot of prayers, if you believe in God, with a lot of reading and multiple consultations. Sorry. In conclusion, I need you to know that external forces always seek to reorder your treasure. And this can occur so subtly that it goes unnoticed until it is done. Hence, the need to guard your heart with all diligence. Thank you so much for your time. I know you have been blessed by this time. And I want to believe that I will see you next week when we take the journey a step further. Thank you.
healthy immune system and a reduction of nitrates. Common health benefits of aloe vera support healthy digestion, moisturize and hydrate skin, support a healthy immune system, reduce harmful toxins, increase absorption of nutrients, enhance antioxidant support, balance stomach acidity naturally, and joint discomfort. The species was first discovered by Carlinos in 1753 as Allopaparite vavera. It was described again in 1768 by Nicholas Boma as aloe vera in Vlora, India on 6th April and by Philip Miller as aloe barbadensis. Aloe vera is a succulent plant species of genus aloe. Aloe vera is from the kingdom plantain. There are two types of aloe vera leaf, gel and leaf juice. The gel is what most people are familiar with. It is the odorless and clear liquid at the innermost part of the leaf. Aloe lattice or juice sips from the leaf when cut. It has a bitter taste. Aloe vera can be grown indoors just about anywhere. Aloe vera can be found thriving in various regions of the world. Southwest U.S., Southern East Asia, Mexico, and Central America. Продолжение следует... 
provide a promising product to be used in diabetes, including food ulcer, antioxidants, and possible antimicrobial properties, especially the leaf skin extract. Aloe vera extracts from leaf skin and flower can be considered as good natural antioxidant source. Protection from skin damage after radiation therapy. A study carried out at the University of Naples, Italy, tested five different topical creams to see how effective they might be in protecting the skin of breast cancer patients receiving radiation therapy. One of these creams contains aloe, depression, learning, and memory. Aloe vera enhances learning and memory and also alleviates depression. One from second degree burn. A team of plastic surgeons compare aloe vera gel to 1% silver, cream for the treatment of second degree bones. Bones wounds among the patients treated with aloe vera heal significantly quicker. Vera contains approximately 98.5% water, while the mucilage or gel of about 99.5% water, the remaining 0.5 to 1% Solid materials contain of a range of compounds include water soluble and fat soluble, vitamins, minerals, enzymes, polysaccharides, and organic acids. Aloe vera grows in full sun or past shade. It is very drought tolerant and will tolerate cold. It's hardly to 2 degrees centigrade. It grows naturally in hot, humid climates and high rainfall. In wet rain soil with high organic matter, it does best with an annual rainfall of 500 mm or more.
features on plantain. Plantains are banana cultivars that belong to the Musase and Genos Musa family, whose fruits are generally used for cooking. They may be eaten ripe or unripe and are generally starchy. Many cooking bananas are referred to as plantains or green bananas. In botanical usage, the term plantain is used for true plantain, while other starchy cultivars used for cooking are called cooking bananas. True bananas are cultivars belonging to the AAB group, while cooking bananas are healthy cultivars belonging to the AA, ABB and BBB groups. The currently accepted scientific name for all such cultivars in this group is Musa paradisiaca, that is French plantain, which is one of the principal species. The remaining include Musa acuminates, which are Gross, Mitchell and Cavendish, and also Musa coniculata, that is on plantain. Plantain contain more starch and less sugar than desert banana, which is sweet banana. Therefore, they are usually cooked or otherwise processed before eating. The physical appearance of plantain is greenish in color, the outer covering pod. It is slightly curved in length and when ripe, it has dark or yellowish color with dark patches. When plantain is peeled, the inner fruit is slightly yellowish and cannot be eaten raw, except it is cooked or allowed to go through the process of ripening. They are typically boiled or fried when eating green. And when processed, they can be made into flour and turned into big products, such as cakes, bread, and pancakes. Green plantain can also be boiled, cooked, roasted, baked, pureed, and then used as thickened for soup. Depending on the mode applied for preparation and intended form to be eaten, the pulp of green plantain is typically added with the peel, often so stiff. It has to be cut with a knife to be removed, unlike the immature yellow plantains, which can be peeled like typical desert bananas. The pulp is softer than in immature green fruit and some of the starch has been converted to sugar. They can be eaten raw but not as flavorful as desert banana, so are usually cooked. When yellow plantains are fried, they tend to caramelize, turning into a golden brown color. They can also be boiled, baked, microwaved or grilled over charcoal, either peeled or unpeeled. Plantain are a stable food in the tropical regions of the world, ranking as the 10th most important staple food in the world. As a staple, plantain are treated in much the same way as potato and with a similar neutral flavor calories wise and texture when the unripe fruit is cooked by steaming, boiling, frying. Plantain is a gigantic herb that springs from an underground stem or rhizome. Most varieties are 2 to 9 meters or 3 to 10 meters, that is 10 to 33 feet tall, and have a conical false trunk formed by the leaf sheds of long spirally arranged leaves. The fruit which is green to brown yellow is typically larger in size thicker, greener or more brownish skin than the common banana and is born in bunches. Plantain plants is tall and tree like perennial abacus plants with a sturdy pseudo stem and large broad leaves arranged spirally at the top. The leaves are large blades with a pronounced central midrib and obvious vein. They can reach up to 2.7 meters that is 8 to 9 feet in length and up to 0.6 meters, that is 2.0 feet in width. Each studio stem produces a group of flowers from which the fruit develops in an hanging cluster. The plantain fruit is developed in a single spike or racem, arranged on the central stalk of the spike in 5 to 20 cluster or hands, with each hand containing up to 20 fruits or fingers. In commercial plantation, parent dies after harvest and is replaced with a daughter plant. However, a plantain can grow for 25 years or more if managed properly. Plantain grow best in hot and humid climates, required a rainfall of at least 1000 mm, that is 39.4 inches per year, to survive and have a high requirement. Plantain will grow optimally at 27 degrees centigrade and require a deep soil, rich in organic matter which is well draining and well aerated. The plants will grow optimally in soil with a pH between 5.5 and 7.0. Young plantains are very susceptible to wind damage and it is recommended that they are planted in sufficient shelters or in a block 
so that the plants will protect one another. Soccer plantains are vegetatively propagated most often from suckers, shoots that grow from a board at the base of the plant, or from combs, underground bulbs known as rhizome. The use of old combs is very laborious, so it is more common to grow from small pieces of comb. There are different types of plantain suckers, which are produced by the mother plants, such as maidenhead, sword sucker, and water sucker. Maidenhead have a large radius stem, which does not produce fruit. Sword suckers have a narrow base, short radius stem, and narrow blade like leaves. They produce healthy, fruitful radius stem where they are mature. Water suckers have short pseudo stems and broad leaves. Water suckers are not strongly attached to the rhizomes and generally produce weaker plants and less fruits. Maiden heads and large sword suckers are preferred over water suckers. Planting the desired pieces of the plant are usually planted 30 to 60 cm, that is 1.8 to 23.6 inch deep in the soil, and should generally be planted at the end of the dry season or the beginning of the wet season. Plant spacing is dependent on the cultivar being planted. Frequent weeding is required until plants are tall enough to shade out. Competitive plants and should be started about six weeks after planting. Planting are fast growing and require the frequent addition of nutrients as well as additional irrigation. In the dry season, planting is often grown alongside other crop plants with similar requirements. Indeed, the young banana plant makes excellent nurses for other crops, such as papaya and cocoa, which can be grown very close to the young planting. The fruit that is planting usually harvested at its mature but unripe stage, ripens within two to seven days after harvest, making planting a highly perishable crop, particularly in the overripe stage. Plantain originated from Asia. It is grown both in tropics and subtropics with Central American and West Indies, producing most of the crop. So My guest today is from the Ocean State Asset Management Agency, OSAMA. Ocean State Asset Management Agency, an agency put in place to manage government uh, assets. It will tell us uh, what constitutes government assets and how do they manage it? Uh, Mr. Tayo Olukunle Akiola is with me in the studio this morning. He's the director of admin, director of administration of Shon State Asset Management Agency. Mr. Olukunle Akiola, you are welcome good to the studio. Good morning. Viewers, good morning. Yeah. Viewers. Good morning. Yes, government asset, government property. What constitutes government asset and government properties? Let's start from that. May I be on the provoker to begin like this? Our agency, known as also Asset Management Agency, we are the agency saddled statutorily to manage all the assets of the state government of also movable and immovable. When you talk of movable and immovable, you are talking of landed properties, buildings, and all manner of structures, and machines, vehicles, everything called properties of the state government. That is our baby. That is our, our assignment, to manage it effectively, profitably, for the government of the day. Thank you. Anything government property. Anything called government property. Including the property of OSBC here. Yeah. Including your building, your land, your machines, your vehicles, everything. Even though these gadgets that we are seeing here, they constitute government property. And you are saddled with that responsibility. That is the stat statutory responsibility of a small asset management agency. What about schools? Including schools. Public schools. They are part of the government properties, all the buildings, all the lands there, hospitals. Everywhere where government has any property whatsoever, it's our baby, it's our son. Are they not too enormous for you, for your agency to manage? We look at the, you know, uh, <laughs> the largeness of government properties scattered everywhere. Now, it's not enormous, it's our baby, it's what we have been doing. We are used to it, and we are well fully equipped to do it, the assignment given unto us. We have the staff on, we have the staff on ground, variety of qualifications, professionals, managers, 
on ground to manage effectively all the assets of the state government. Oh, well, well, let me ask this question. When was the agency established? Because so, so, so many people, uh, or should state government uh, asset management is an agency, it looks like a, a new creation. Uh, relatively, one can say it is new, exactly as you have put it. It was established in the year 2017. 2017. Yeah. That should be around five, four or five years ago. Yes. By it was in, there is an act of the state government from the state house of assembly that established the agency. It is called Osama Establishment Law 2017. And since the agency was established, uh, how far have you gone? in managing the, the, the asset of government? Uh, when it has been created since then, you see all our activities, you hear about it, even more recent, your director general here, your authority here contacted our agency. They, they, are, they are being troubled by the way people are encroaching on their land at Osu, your land, I mean your land at Osu, I at Iwo, oh, oh. and at, uh, Iwe. at Iwe. And even when he informed us officially, we swung, into, we swung into action. And he was very much impressed by the way we handled the assignment. And the report is on the way. The copy may be forwarded to you, but the copy will, first of all, be passed through our political head, which is the SA supervising the agency, to the governor. And uh, aside of OSBC, I know there are so many encroachments. Uh, of government properties here and there, most especially the properties of schools, public schools, you know, the lands, so many are encroaching. What constitutes, let me start from that, encroachment on government properties? Uh, you, what constitutes it is the attitude of the people towards anything called public property. They believe public property belongs to all. That is the way public people see it. And that is the impression we are out as an agency, saddled with the responsibility to enlighten them, to educate them on whatever they call government property should not just be tampered with anyhow, should not be encroached upon. Notably the lands, that is on most occasions where we have problems. People will just get there and they will erect their structure, buildings there, and when, we, when, when they are contacted, they begin to say ah, they bought the land from one family who owns the land. They don't understand. On most occasions, number one, apart from their attitude, which is stubbornness, little education that people have about this encroachment matter is a major factor that prompted our agenda that we must come on, on here to educate people. They are building anyhow. Proliferation here and there. Hospital lands, even your OSBC okay. lands, schools lands, anything where they, because they will not know where the boundary is. That's one problem. And they will believe once they see the structure of the government on a particular area of land, the remaining land, anybody they can just there is free for all that they can come there and take it. They don't know any time the measurement is with the, is with the government that they are not supposed to encroach on. So we want the public that responsibility to enlighten them, to educate them, to let them be aware the consequences should they fail. So you, you mentioned something during the course of answering my last question. Encroachment, demarcation. Are there no demarcation, visible demarcation of government or this government lands? Definitely there are on any particular government land there will be physical pillar structure that will have been put there by the state Soviet general and the Ministry of Land and the documents are in pact with them that this expanse of land belongs to so 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 agency of government. Even on some occasion they will erect some bond and some notice there, but still people will just defy all those things and they, they go ahead and do whatever they like on the land. But so at times they get the they go ahead to erect some of the structures from possibly the Ministry of Lands. Uh, are the are, are Ministry of Lands not aware uh, of, of the existence of these government properties? Uh, because on some occasion we, we discovered that they get approval from the authority concerned. 
uh, on most occasions they do, not on most occasions. Nation of land will not contradict themselves in the sense that they are the custodians of such documents. So they will not make any mistake, you know, to release approval or to whoever come for such an approval that they want to erect on government land. Should there be another decision which is which more be you know done by the authority that okay they are aware this expense on that they may want to sell some that is a different case but on most, on most occasion what we are talking about is that concern of encroachment unlawful taking over of government property especially land it is becoming rampant and hence our hardship must be put on here our view must be put on here for public to know that we are alive to our responsibility. We are coming about the punishment, the legislation for unlawful encroachment on government land. But is there any working relationship between your agency and the Ministry of Lands? Who gives approval? No, definitely there is. We are working together. More or less, the agency, DSA supervising Osama, is the DSA, I mean, DSA supervising special, special our agency. Advisor. The special ad advisor supervising the agency called Osama domicile or is residing in the Ministry of, uh, of Land and Physical Planning. Mm -hmm. So, definitely, we are, we are with them, we are on the same page. Well, we are still on the program here in Cafe, and my guest is still Mr. Tayo Akeola, is the Director of Administration of um, State Asset Management Agency, is here to talk about unlawful encroachment on government properties in Russian state which has become you know, something of major concern uh, to government and which needs uh, to be addressed holistically. Uh, let, let's look at it this way, Mr. Akinola. Encroachment, abuse of government property. What is the relationship between the two? Encroachment and abuse. Uh, they, they intertwine. And abuse of government property, like the way people are using this uh, water from the water corporation. corporation. That's an abuse. The way people handle government property that is legally erected for their use. They will just damage some, and even where a pipe is leaking, they will not even bother to report. Even on most occasions, I've seen instances where even people in a community, when they say there is a leaking pipe, that that, that connects to the to the house of another person, they will even go and break it more and be tapping water right. from there. Especially those who do not have that pipe on water in their house. So that's an abuse. You imagine most of the roads, especially on the bri on the bridges, there is only this uh, aluminium hanger and they put there. You say people are so fraudulent. They will go there and be removing it. And they will now refabricate it into another thing to their port to be selling. Those are the abuses. You won't see where they put uh, light. People are removing the ball. Yeah, the street lights. The street lights. So these are the abuses. But what we are talking about in terms of the encroachment is specifically, specifically related to the land that belongs to the government. We, we, that people come there. Yeah and they are building without getting approval. Without getting. Must they come to get approval to erect, to acquire legally? No, they are not supposed to even come to us. Because when we say government property, the government must have a purpose for separating a piece of land or an expanse of land for initially a project or a program and having a mind for future developmental programs of the, I mean, of the government successive government. But thereafter, when people are observing that it's taking some time, these people don't use much of the land they give them. They, they don't decide to say, well, they clandestinely, fraudulently collude with the owner of the land, the family that initially owned the land, they will not pretend say they have bought the land from the owner. And the owner, you can see the way they are, they, they conspire, click on the way they handle it. And this is what is giving us concern. Well, what about those who erect you know, movable shops 
on government property. You see schools here and there. You see people put you know, uh, movable kiosk uh, shops uh, on those properties. Uh, uh, are they also illegal? Uh, it can be termed illegal in the sense when approval is not obtained from the appropriate authority. But you can feel this way again. It may not be illegal if approval, if an authority has allowed them to erect it, believing that they will be generators of revenue right. to that particular agency, generally to the post of the government. That may not be regarded as illegal because they have obtained an approval. But in a situation whereby in front of your office here, just see a structure without contact, consulting or contacting your agency here, the di your di director general or your director of admin. And if the, the, the structure may be put there, the chaos may be put there for years if you don't go and challenge the person. That is an abuse. That is, an abuse is an aspect of recruitment. But recruitment is when the permanent structure is erected there without obtaining approval legally to do so. And the truth of the matter is that when they say something is government land, you are not so, supposed to even imagine building anything on that land. This is the concern that people will collude with the un original family that own that land released to the government. They will say, they, they will say Say the government can no longer you know, make use of all this expense of land. Why not say something? The owner, the initial family that owns that land, we now you know, send that person, we begin to send the person and not to the people. What effort are, uh, is your agency uh, making now, now that the issue has become you know, a major concern uh, to the government? What effort is your agency uh, making to reclaim those lands, those properties? No, let's begin with lands. Let's begin like this. We are to go out searching for such locations where encroachment have been made. Okay. And that is exactly what is taking much of our time in that agency. Having identified all those illegal structures on government land, then we mark them. You will go around and see wherever you see any structure on any government land, you, you happen to see Osama do not erect or remove, and we mark X. That is our logo. You will see the we describe Osama there. So that's, what we, that's one of the steps that we are taking right now. So, some people will now rush back to the office, our office. Then we educate them on what to do about it. On most occasions, the punishment, they will forfeit, they may either forfeit that from other building, or the government has the power to demolish if they want to do something with the land in future, just for the benefit of the citizenry. What is the legislation? What is the punishment? What is the law in place? You said there is an act of the Oshun State House of Assembly that yeah. establishes your agency. What is the law in place for uh, anybody, anybody who encroaches illegally into government properties? The, 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 the law is, is very clear. Mm. We ensure them to go ahead and remove it. Mm. And you know when a building is already put on the land, it's not easy to remove it. So, but if they refuse to hack in to our own instruction, then we have the power to consult the Ministry of Land, and when the government takes a decision on that particular land that they want to use, we have the power to go and, de to go and, to go and forcefully re remove. Maybe we bulldoze it and we pull it down. What, uh, let, let me ask this question, Mr. Atwala. Uh, your agency, are they working with other agencies of government? To in ensuring that uh, 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 any encroachment on government lands, you know, is, is treated, you know, legally. For instance, Subeb is an agency of government. Mm -hmm. uh, the public primary schools is under Subeb, mm -hmm. and we have the schools scattered uh, here and there in Ocean State, and they have lands, large expanse of lands, these public schools, and the, most of like we rightly said, families of those who gave the land to the government initially, when they discover that all the lands are not being put into use, they return to the land and sell illegally. Is there any working relationship between your agency and other agencies of government concerned in bringing illegal encroachment of government land to the notice of your agency? 
Thank you very much. We are working together on the same page. Initially, when the public were not aware that an agency called Osama has been in existence, I mean, has been in existence, managing such managing such activities of the government. But now, most encroachment, when it is reported out of error to the ministry, they refer them to our agency, and they are there. We cancel them. We tell them the consequences of the error they have committed. So all the ministries concerned, notably the Ministry of Education, notably the Ministry of uh, uh, the HMB. Hospital management board. Yes. The same way your agency here, yeah, you know your agency is being supervised by the Ministry of uh, Information and, and Strategy. Yeah. Your director general reported the case of encroachment to our agency and we merely swung into action. The same way all other concerned ministries are reporting to us. Okay, uh, for the benefit of uh, the viewers uh, at home, local speaker, speakers of our uh, uh, language, Yoruba, uh, who are mostly concerned, affected by this illegal encroachment on government land, we are going to make the program bilingual, so that your 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 messages will get across to so many people, you know, concerned. Aki wogo wako ujuma, EM Cafe, la wa lorieto, ande jomide ni, obani, Tayo Akiola, I want to know what Akoso agency government to open the Osama Ocean State Asset Management Agency. I want to share a mojo to I want to do a job. I want to share 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 a job. Wo ori tu ki a joba ba pa ju lo ile to je ijoba pe ijoba oni foju re wo won o tin sele ti pe a sugbon nisin won ti so pe eni awon to nse won ti se tan lati fi kele ofin gbe won won si tin lo ka kire lati ri pe won se bo si ye kun won se ko le bari a bo si ye ko ri o ki ogbe ni tayo akan la ka bo so re to ye pa fe to ri television o so a se dada le debi Agency, a joy, Osama, Kenny Joba, Dasilefu, a Jacobin Atman. Agent Coco, so who you are, a Mipone or Gag by Pata Pata, so director, Nay, you say, or Swanset Management Agency, and to Joe Gag by Pata Pata on Lou, Fisset, Moajelin, Oquenny, and Lady Lukman. Adirem Adiriji, a many director of administration and supply, to run our CPI. The language is very difficult. I can hear Johnny Kilowa. He said Bogi Tijaba Fida. He did Bogi Tijaba Fida. He didn't say Osama. Tan solo by Kale. Nekwe lati moju to buota nkwe ne duki a Tijaba. Duki a Tijaba teba wo. He saw Ponyco. He lay one bed. Uba and Ero, Uba and Ero, then no rule saying. Building he let a big calay. Go boom, come pata pata to my tati jetty job out. Go go go. Oko and Bell. I wear on Lala. He lay Lala to jetty job out. On to get to care of any. Eh, you are low far, Tefi de Villaro. Eh, into fwa ni edwo kaju. Nimba ti ari ori si si roi. Tan fi sawo si an le se wa. Tu yuko odu isa le jo loku iluti ma pe osama iseta wa funen. Pe ili awo ibito deni o wanti bolu o wanti kole si be. Ile awo ibito de de awo kati enda kumbi ile awo ibito de ni o wanti fi kaka dasi meji la ide kwa wafu tu awo leti awo ise ti alilei ba se bado soju se tabre se ma wa ibi bugu si awo intanso ba ida wakati ni a dule ri kwa wafu wafu sofwa tafu basi ta fa kwenye mbati le se inua sofwa wa. Pe mbalu ilayito wa nini 
do a no su ati to wa ni wo a lo be awon le ise mi to wa fe go fun awa lai je pe oga le ise tabi awon alase le ise wa so fun ta ta ri awon ise wa si ta pe lo mo wa we ka ti ta si ri pe lo to ibi ti an ko ile ise ile ti wo nu le school ile ti wo nu le hospital ile ti wo nu le job ambi ye wa je n to je do kan fun gbagba gbe kini o gboro mo tesi waju bayi tori ise kan gbe le a lowo ni a si gboro si ko ni tumo ti mo le wa ba se de bayi je ka gbe le eh eh ise ijoba o n tesi waju na ni a kan lo wa nbe ka wa to de be si ibi a ba de a wa tun gba lowo won i kan be ni ti ni ta la se like pe ojo Our schools there for every the country. Oh, what kind of? Oh, what who? Oh, what lots of good? Country go go. What you have? Confess the video, Nisi. Confess the video. I repeat the migrant that no more. We are on leave, leave. So we go go. Up a lot of bad man. She made a detang. Kolo in Jordan. I repeat. 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 I lati ko le ko shobo sore be school ise ijoba mo fun ni ru ase ru e ijoba o le oloju o le laju e leti ta lu bowo n to je du ki a talada ni gan te ya ba te ba le ra le fa pere te ba de be jo kan te ba ta ko nkan kan sibe bo lo se ri lara yin e fara ya igbese ti a le gbe pe ki lo de san fe gbale ma lowo ni ba kan na awon na gbe se ni lowo pe gbogbo bi ta ba ti ta fe ma bo lu le ijoba o laima lai je pe o ran si joba e lo be e lo wadi ke fun alabo igbese tu ba to lati se fun a se fun awon ti won wa ti bo lo le joba e te ti ri lenu awon bi te ti de eni ile ise wa na osbc won ti fi to ile ti o se nsele nwo to nsele ni re to nsele so lo su kini igbese ti joba o gbe lori awon e ngba ta ba ti je bi ti won ta ti bo lo le ta ti kon kan si ke bo se so seyin a ti fi ami si pe o sa ma e wa ri wa lo fisi wa a fun an ni ma igbese ti kan gbe igba ti won ba wa ri lo fisi se e fun an lo fi pe akoda e san wo bi ti bayi ni o e lo mo lo leyin ni abi ke te lo fi e lo san wo to abi kini 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 ja to wa nbe ise wa ni lati koko educate won lati je kan won mo lati tan lo logo lati si e won ji lati je won ma ida wa ba je iba wa ba je in discipline tan se yen Kuma ba ma se pe iwe o tu ma tesi waju le laye na a keru se laye ni pe wo loku ta wo ile yi te ko sori le ijoba yi o a se yen lo sala luna de igbese yi ku to ba to ku ta gbe afi to ijoba leti pe bai bai yi o n ta ba nbi kini ka sisi to se ku akan na lo fi abe a gboro ta se agere a gboro ko ja yi wa si ko ja si n ta ba fun ape ka se bo o fe wa n to fe sa so na ni pe e lo gbe ile yin e lo gbe ile te ko so ile jo e lo gbe ku nbe eni odun 2017 do fe da ajo yin sile ta ba si ngo bayi o ti lo bi odun berin maun je ati ri awon ti e ti fe iya ofin je ninu awon to ta si agere si ile joba eh o ti wa sugbon ti abania tabani ka lo fun tan rawo rawo ari pe jiya yen yo ti poju ti won ba wa ta ba ri pe ibi ti won bo lu yen a le wo se a so ile ifara gbo pe kan na tesi waju nu wa ba je o sugbon e to nbe pe okay o n se te ti se bayi o owo o kan ran bayi te san ni sugbon ta ko ma je o ma gan ni pe kini e lo gbe ku nbe te ba gbe ku nbe a wo a wo pe ijiya mi o tun ti le lo poju e ma pe ijoba ona ke se be so se ko to la se la se gan e ijoba o si lati fara ni ara lu to mo ba se na ba baba wu i se pe ka le omo buro na fe kun pa so yo san wo yo san wo ti o ba fi di pe a ni wo yo san owo a wa work out ti proportion percentage a work out ti idi ile iye owo to ma so san je ajo yin ni ba se popolu awon ajo ijoba mi 
ma ba jilo ile ise tun ri si oro ile ni ipinle osun ati awon lajo lajo ojoba mi si oro ile kan kan baba bi a josh web bi a josh to manage me bob lati fi to ajo yin leti ti won ba riru awon ti won ta se agere sile ijoba a to lo le ijoba ju gbe be yin na ti se so nsin ministry of education e wa do secondary and primary school tan ko and even state ati awon elewe giga to je ti ijoba mi le osun ati hospital management board won fi to aleti lore ku ore ta ba ti fi to aleti ge mo se so ai 30 ai duro ai 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 fi dagun na a bo soju se lati lo se wa di pe bo ni ibo ni le ijoba yi de a lo ba so of your general a lo so office of your general lati poko wo kini a document we ti won fi ba ile ye kale ba o ni le on se to nba ba ti o ko mo bi le se to la fi lo mo bi awon to bolu e ba se wo mu e to ti o wa so iru igbese yo ku ta tun ma gbe lori e na ibo ni le se ajo yin wa fun afani awon to ba ngo yin bayi ti won wo yin so se fe wa si atun se ile se ajo osama osun asset management agency o wa ni eyin abere e ba lo sibiti christian privilege ni outline e bi tan pe second gate yen ona to e wa ya won ni e legbe second gate yen to lo si christian privilege welfare board eh kini ka black and culture center center ni no star development center e gaga ni bi to po lo pa won loga loga ti ba won ase idani leko ikan nu ile tan ko kade na fun wa ta nu lo won lo ba Well, uh, Mr. Tayo Akinola, uh, what advice will you give to those who have encroached on government land? What advice do you have for them? The piece of advice we have for the public, especially for those who have already committed that error of encroachment on government land, and for those who maybe may be contemplating doing the same that whatever they call government property is government property and anybody that tampers with it, with it has already contravened law and therefore such a person or such groups of people should be expecting punishment appropriately hmm. when well, i want to appreciate mr tayo olokunle akiola the director of administration and supplies or show asset management agency for finding time to be on the program this morning am cafe and we hope our viewers at home uh, will have understand what one thing or the other about encroachment legal encroachment on government lands most especially in Oshun state like you have rightly said it has become in a recurring issue in us on our state and government is ready to address it holistically so uh mr kela is saying that anybody who has contravened the law should come to your agency yes to seek redress yes and your agency is located where our agency as i say is located inside the center for staff development along uh christian pilgrimage road mm -hmm. Welfare board, and whoever has committed the offence should come and see uh, the director of admin and supply in the agency, Mr. Akiola. And I want to appreciate Mr. Sekiro Abiola Akabi also is the director of planning, research, and statistics in the agency. Osama, thank you for coming here. Well, this will be a convenient spot to draw the curtain on today's edition of AM Cafe. On behalf of the producer of the program, uh, Shola Obuleye, Shola Aluma, and the entire production crew here in the studio this morning. My name is Adeyemi Abodemi. The program will return tomorrow morning. We thank you for being there, and good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Switzerland in the white who will be kicking from left to right in the first 45 minutes with that man in charge of proceedings uh, and Hinchcliffe obviously really unfortunate so close to kick off and there's no their jobs again it's just difficult maybe for this delivery is uh, almost right on the money share was there and Switzerland are in front it's lashed in by Seferovic from close range it was a good delivery by Shakiri. It caused some real chaos in the Portuguese goal mouth. It fell to Harris Seferovic. He sweeps it home. Portugal protest. Switzerland lead. Well, the Portuguese aren't happy appealing to the referee. There was an infringement in there. Ronaldo, of course, as captain, is leading those calls. It's just defensive disarray. It's a decent ball into the ball. Underway to question. I think you're quite Fabian share, and the goal is Ronaldo, and that's a decent save. And William puts it in the back of the net from the rebound. And Portugal are in front on 15 minutes. It was a decent save, but he couldn't hold it, Gregor Kobel. And William was perfectly placed. And Portugal lead by a goal to nil. But for Switzerland defensively, this is another soft, poor goal. The Shaka Rodriguez will hit it and hit it wide. It's not an easy chance, and the ball is coming across your body like that. Invariably, it tends to slip. Nicely floated ball into Seferovic. Shakiri might hit it from there. He did. Shooting chance for Shakiri. He takes it. And Rui Patricio treated it with respect. But a straightforward stop. It's better than his earlier strike. It's on target at least. In the middle, Otavio may not need him. Ran in. Ronaldo. And the shot is deflected wide in the opinion of Otavio. Not in the opinion of the referee. A wonderful morning to you, sport fans. And we thank you for being here this morning. On what are you are doing? It's my name. Welcome you on AM Sport Made in Edition for this week. As so many things that has been going on in the ever busy world of sport with the Flamingos that uh, the under-17 ladies has qualified for uh, the uh, under-17 World Cup that will be going on in India. Of course, this is the second time India will be hosting any FIFA competition. They hosted the under-17 in 2017, uh, under FIFA under-17 uh, men's category in 2017. And they will be hosting this year's under-17 women's uh, category uh, later on in October uh, this year of course uh, Wales also qualified uh, for World Cup after so many years of absence uh, and uh, it was an emotional night for Ukraine as does that home goal uh, from Andrei Yamalenko the captain of the team uh, was just enough for Wales uh, to qualify in that um, encounter the Super Eagles are back in Abuja and of course they had uh, uh, their training section and at the Moshuda Vela National Stadium in Abuja yesterday same as the Lone Stars of Syria alone, they are in 
Uh, also, they've also arrived under uh, with officials as well. Every one of them, all the hands are on deck to make sure that uh, Nigeria uh, has uh, an each free uh, qualifiers at this time around. Talking about tennis this morning, and uh, Rafael Nadal uh, further established the reason why he's the king of clay as uh, he, you know, <laughs> won the trophy yesterday against Kaspar Ruud. Of course, uh, Coco Golf lost two finals in succession. Uh, she lost to Iga Swatek in the female category of the French uh, Open yes on Saturday and of course uh, yesterday as well lost the double with Jessica Pegulia. This and many more we'll be discussing this morning. I have with me Shagun Afadoro who makes a return. Shagun, good morning and welcome on board. A wonderful morning to have you at home. Yeah, of course, uh, it's another time to talk sports. A lot has happened, like you said, in the ever busy uh, world of sports and of course uh, a lot of interesting results coming from the yeah. MPFL. And then uh, yesterday too, like you said, Wales um, qualified for the um, uh, World Cup after I think 64 years mm -hmm. of not playing in the World Cup and of course it's a very emotional moment for them like you said earlier and they will be in the group with against USA mm -hmm. and um, their brother uh, England mm -hmm. and of course it will be a very very interesting uh, uh, group to be a very interesting group of course and mm -hmm. of course uh, like you I've said uh, yesterday, Messi fans are actually has a bragging right when uh, Lionel Messi scored five, five goals. And hmm. I think that's the total number of goals he actually had in the. Is it League, League One? League One. Hmm. This is the, uh, he scored it in just a game. That's to tell you that Messi will always be Messi any day, any time. Yesterday, too, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo fans as well have uh, a bragging right because he Cristiano scored Ronaldo race, scored a race, and, an assist. Uh, uh, and made an assist. And that's to tell you these two guys, even though they are. They are aging. They are getting. Uh, uh, they are leaving uh, the the sports scene for the younger generations. Uh, the likes of. Uh, Do you think they are actually leaving for the younger generation? They they will have to leave. One will. A certain Ronaldo still has like two three seasons to still play. Of course, but one day they will leave. Definitely. You you said he has two or three seasons. Ten years ago, he had all everything he, he, he's yeah. still our uh, a young player and of course he made his part known you would agree with me that last year they did none of them won the uh, uh ballon d'or uh, the best player uh, fever best player of course uh Lionel messi won the ballon d'or this season it is so glaring that none of them will win as well uh, uh, but although we don't know what will be the outcome of the world cup but uh, with what has been uh, uh, happening now, we we know that uh, there is only one man that deserves that award more, which mm. is Karim Benzema. But then the World Cup will come, and if probably any of the teams win the World Cup, probably we might have uh, a change in that. But what I am saying entirely is, is that uh, Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo they are actually aging, but then they are still showing the world that see. Now, I missed today. <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll see to that and very shortly. Let's come back and talk about our Nigerian Super Eagles as they are back in Abuja. They had their training session yesterday, of course. Uh, uh, out of uh, uh, 27 players invited, we had uh, 26 uh, players that uh, were in camp yesterday. Out of uh, we had 24 players in camp yesterday and they trained as well. The coach was able to familiarize with the new set of players that uh, walked into the camp with Sime, uh, Demona Lukman, uh, Ribo and others like yeah. that. And uh, yes, uh, we'll be looking to have a very uh, solid performance against the Lone Star, considering the fact that we play at the four hall draw in Abuja. Yeah, no, it wasn't Bini that we play at the one yeah. four hall draw. From four goes down, they came back. To I think play it was four one. Yes, and they came back and to and draw that game. To draw that so, game. Yeah, but then this time around, you know, uh, the spring goes we want to get to do everything manly possible to making sure that at least they put a smile on the faces of Nigerians mm. after losing out on, of, of the World Cup, after uh, losing out of the uh, African Cup of Nations in the uh, uh, second round of the competition. It wasn't a very good one for them. And you would also they remember... They lost the two friendlies as well. Uh, yes, that they lost the two friendlies. That was what I was about to say. They, they, they lost the two friendlies uh, that they played under, under this new coach. Yes, let's take excuse. Uh, let's give him an excuse because most of his players are uh, didn't most of his top notch players didn't actually play in that in those uh, games yes now they are back we have a similar back in the in, in so, the squad we have a Aribo back we have a Demola Lukman back and then he has everything humanly possible to win 
the game against Syria alone. Let's wait and see. Let's see if we have employed a coach that is worth being employed or we are actually uh, having another coach that will not be able to uh, achieve anything. But so, then, I think we should give him all the necessary support and I am very, very sure against Syria alone we should win. Well, so who would you want uh, to be your preferred number nine? Uh, Victor Sime, a uh, certain Syria Desert who is firing from all cylinders for the club and uh, he got his first goal yeah, for Nigeria against uh, uh, Mexico and of course we have Sadiq Kumar who will be still getting promotion back to the La Liga. Yes, uh, we have a lot of uh, players, a lot of good players if you want to uh, uh, start mentioning names. But then, Victor Simeon remains our number nine. Uh, in the past, he has done very well. He has shown to the world that he's good. And in this, uh, in the Syria this season, he did very, very well. And of course, we have a whole lot of replacements. And I'm sure the uh, coach knows what to do when it comes to making substitution. But to me, I think Osimhen still remains our number nine. As uh, Kumar, most of the time, he has been a very good player. He's one of the players I believe in so much. Mm. But then, I'm sure Nigerians don't really believe in him. Mm. You would remember uh, he has played he, he played for Nigeria uh, in the Af Af African Cup of Nations. And anytime he's been brought in, people complain about his style of game. But well, then, he got a goal. He, he got a goal. Mm. And he almost even made an equalizer for Nigeria during the match against Tunisia but mm. then he hasn't been able to give in his space i think this time around that he's been given the opportunity i'm sure he will do something uh, to make sure that uh the super egos and Nigerians have that kind of solid belief in him and make him one of their best uh, nigerian players ever well we during the course of the week uh the flamingos that's talking about the under 17 ladies uh got uh uh, they played out a goalless draw with Ethiopia. Walter played uh, six qualifying matches and scored 15 goals without conceding any goals. Uh, we need to accredit these younger lads uh, for doing uh, make, making Nigeria proud. Yes, uh, making Nigeria proud. At the last game, they didn't score any goal, uh, but then they've won uh, by a go to nil mm. uh, in the first leg of that encounter. We made it one nil, nil. on aggregate, and that was just what they needed to qualify uh, for the uh, competition. Yes, uh, it's a very good one for them. You know, Nigeria, when it comes to female football, we have always been dominant. Mm. But this time around, we know uh, that uh, when it comes to female football in, in the world, we are always nowhere to be found, uh, which is not good enough. I think this time around, this under 17 has shown to us that they are very, very good because uh, they are good uh, to have not considered any goal, any goal and to have scored 15 solid and beautiful goals in the course of the qualifying stage. I, I, I hope at uh, this time around they will be able to make us proud in the World Cup. Uh, talking about the uh, uh, World Cup that will be coming up in India, and we hope in October. that uh, yes, in October, and we hope that by that time uh, we will have a reason uh, to smile. Well, it looks like um, <laughs> MFM of Lagos is destined for the NNL last season after playing out a goalless draw with uh, their counterparts during the course of the week, talking about Lobby Stars in Lagos. Lobby Stars held them to a goalless draw. I don't, I don't really know what is wrong with uh, MFA. Last season, they parted away with one of their best coaches ever, and I wouldn't understand what is wrong with them. This season, they've not been doing well at all, and I am sincerely not happy for them because uh, you know it's, it's another Southwest team mm. that will be going down the radar to play in the NNL. It will be very, very difficult in the Nigerian Premier League, just like uh, that of 3 the, was also the actually defeated away from home, was it? Yeah. English Premier League, yes, 3 SC was defeated from uh, away from home, but I'm sure 3 SC, uh, SC will still find their feet mm. and probably play in see. the MPFL next season. What I'm saying is that uh, in the English Premier League, just like uh, the Nigerian, uh, uh, Nigerian League, it is very, very difficult. When, once you relegate, it is very, very difficult for to you come back. to come back. So uh, I'm not happy with what is happening to MFM. And I hope uh, that probably a miracle will happen because they are mounting on fire. <laughs> <laughs> they might you know, pray it out. Uh, of course, they might, might pray it out and mm. we might see a miracle that will make them uh, avoid relegation this season. Finally, this morning, Rafael Nadal claims his 14th, a record 14th French Open title uh, yesterday uh, after defeating Kaisparu, the Norwegian, 63-63-60. 
on the, the clay court. And, uh, like you said earlier, he's the best. Talking about the tennis, uh, he's the best in the game. And uh, when when it comes to this category, 14 uh, French Open uh, for a single individual, that's mm. to tell you how good he is. And then I am sure when uh, names of tennis players are being written, Adafi Nadal's name will be written in gold. And he has made this uh, mark uh, in the course of the competition. He defeated Novak Djokovic, one of the greatest uh, tennis player ever. And of course, uh, you will know uh, he, he, somebody that defeats the best actually deserves the best. Uh, he, he, he got the comp uh, he won the competition, and th that is a very very good uh, stage for him to start his year. And finally, in the women's category, Gasuate who is 21 years world number one, defeated Coco Golf 19 years. Of course, Coco Golf lost at two finals in the uh, French Open this year, the singles and the doubles with uh, Jessica Pergulia. Um, it's a good one that we've seen young, young lads, uh, most especially this year, uh, 18, 19, uh, young it ladies. from the last year, last when year, we, yes. we actually saw uh, younger ladies coming into the fold and making uh, uh, they, they are marked in the world of female football, uh, female tennis. Mm. This time around, you know, it is very difficult to decide who will win a competition when it comes to female mm. tennis. You see someone win this time around, and next, uh, 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 the likes of, 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 of course, that's yes, that's to tell you how competitive uh, the competition is. Well, we need to wrap up this morning. Many thanks to everyone that made this production possible. I need to appreciate uh, Shago for joining me on the program this morning. Mudin Adeleke is the producer of this program. Momota, you are the body, is my name. And until tomorrow, when we come your way again. I say, don't stop loving sport and enjoy the rest of your day. Good morning. May not need him. Ran him. Ronaldo and the shot is deflected wide in the opinion of Otavio not in the opinion of the referee look threatening Portugal and every time they go for Bruno Fernandes he's done really well Diogo Jota Ronaldo 2-0 great counter-attacking goal Two, three touches covering 60 metres. And who's on the end of it? Cristiano Ronaldo for 2-0. Well, I mentioned earlier in the game that Portugal have the ability to turn defences around. And that's exactly what they do here with the ball over the top. Again, he's really retrieved more than, than anything else. It's not the, the, the best forward ball you'll ever see. But it's chased down. It's Ricky Dan. Nuno Mendes can pull it back for Jota. Couldn't quite get his feet sorted out, but it doesn't matter because you know who is there. Cristiano Ronaldo scores and Portugal leads Switzerland by three goals to nil. Well, Switzerland are simply getting ripped apart. The last five minutes, they've just stepped the tempo up Portugal. And they've moved the crowd to tears. It's just been extraordinary attacking football, helped along the way by some really shoddy Swiss defending. But again, Ronaldo, you might, it's not by accident he's in that position to score the goal. As the players develop... Have you? And Ronaldo! Well, he cannot believe it. And neither can anybody else. Well, it's a peach of a ball in, but his movement once again is outstanding. You've got defenders ball watching. Otavio arriving, Jota, Ronaldo... On the front page of the French newspaper this morning and above the masthead of the French newspaper we have this primary Buhari meets governor party chairman stakeholders please tighten security that story is above the masthead of the French newspaper uh, we have another one, 20 power plants suffer major problems, blackouts to worsen. These stories are on the front page of the punch. Next is the nation. And the nation is leading with history and politics. It says consensus candidates are best option. Buhari insists. Consensus candidates 
our best option. Muhari says that is the story making the better headlines on the front page of the nation. And this day is laden with this story. How our church killings put 2023 Northern Presidency up in the air. It is the story making the banner headlines on the front page of this day newspaper. I'd like to have it on the screen there. And we have other stories as well. Out our killings, outraged, outraged Buhari mobilizes all state resources to neutralize attackers, curses them. The story is on the front page of the this day and about the masthead of this day newspaper. Let's have it on the screen, please. Fashola construction of 15.6 billion dollar Abidjan Lagos Highway to benefit 40 million West Africans. Power sector collapse imminent. Stakeholders won. Buhari APC said for third straight victory since 2015. Those stories are on the front page of this day newspaper. Next is the new telegraph. And the new telegraph has the story Black Sunday. Outrage as terrorist attack on the church killed over 50 worshippers. It is the story making the banner headlines on the front page of the New Telegraph. Yes, we have other stories. 2023 Decision Day for Ray PC. Electoral Act Anxiety over Supreme Court Verdict on Section 84, Subsection 12. These stories are on the front page of the New Telegraph. We would like to have them on the screen, please. Moving now to the National Economy. And the national economy is leading with this bank customers lament as fintech related fraud persists. Ed regulators to Kev Menes, banks lost two billion naira to fraud in one year. This is sort of making the better headlines on the front page of the national economy. Moving now to the leadership newspaper. And the leadership has the 24 hours to APC convention South yet to agree on consensus candidates. PNB meets APC caucus, governors ahead of primary, southern leaders commend president, northern governors for zoning presidential ticket. Next is the Guardian. And the Guardian is leading with this story. Um, which appears we're having some technical hitches there while we are not seeing the pictures on the papers on the screen. Please bear with us. Yes, the Guardian says the session, the APC backtracks on zoning as Buhari hosts party caucus. Yes, power sector collapse imminent stakeholders won and scores killed, others abducted as gunmen attack on their church. Moving on to the daily assets. Buhari Akiri Dulu Fayemi man killing of our church worshippers. Stories on the front page of the daily assets. And below the picture stories there we have this OPEC vows of pressure to pump more oil raises output by 216,000 per barrel. Then the blueprint has this in make a map presidential convention.